this is Just Talking, and our guest is CCS video game contributor Henrik Malrek, live on the Chris College Show, Millennial Talk Show. And as we get him, how's he doing, fam? I know he's getting the Zoom, the video, the audio. You know the jazz when it comes to our uh, metaverse that we're all living in. But Henrik Malrek, how you doing, fam? Pretty good. Pretty Ooh, good. I like how about you your guys? Background. Did you say pretty poo? Ooh. What was that? Pretty poo. Pretty I've good, never heard of good, that pretty one. Good, pretty oh, okay, good. pretty good. Pretty good. Okay, that's good to know. <laughs> but hey, Henrik the Wreck, before we indulge you any further with industry talk, Marissa and I, we're going to put you through the ringer with another round of video game trivia. Are you ready, my friend? I guess as ready as I will be. <laughs> hey, well, let's cue the music. Hey, oh, uh, uh, hey. Let's get it, baby. All right, CCS family, are you the kind of person who spends hours glued to your controller like Henrik the Wreck? Have you always loved playing just one more level like Henrik the Wreck? Well, join us as we test his luck today if he actually knows his gaming knowledge. So let's go ahead with the very first question. And you're lucky. I got some multiple choice questions for you. <laughs> what yes. is the best-selling arcade cabinet video game of all time? A, Mortal Kombat, B, Space Invaders, C, Pac-Man, or D, NBA Jam. And Marissa, if you don't have us all on screen, let's go ahead and make that mm -hmm. happen because I think I we really got to really see everybody. And just to yeah. give you a friendly hint, try not to overthink this. Okay. Uh, I would definitely have to go with Pac-Man. Ooh, we got the <laughs> first <laughs> correct answer. Pac-Man, believe it or not, sold 400,000 arcade cabinets alone. And I totally believe it because my father owned Route 66 Billiards and being in the pool table industry, believe it or not, there are so many arcade cabinets of Pac-Man on those factory floors when you go to buy your billiard table. So I definitely believe the hype for Pac-Man. And Henrik, you have to answer faster or it's wrong. <laughs> okay. Yeah. All right. that's, I'll do that's that. The... I'll do that. <laughs> but let's I... go ahead with rule uh, or question number two. What is the voiceover actor in Pokemon Detective Pikachu? Do you know that voiceover actor? Oh yes, it's Ryan Gosling. No! Oh! Actually, that's wrong. Wait. You said Ryan Gosling. Do you want to take that back? Oh, 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 it is a Ryan. It's Ryan Reynolds. Yes, there we go. Uh, sorry, you still don't oh, get it. On. You don't get it. That's why you have to answer oh, quickly. Man. That's why you got to answer quickly, homie. Well, believe it or not, <laughs> not Ryan Gosling, but Ryan Reynolds. He actually did voiceover for the entire movie, believe it or not, CCS Family, which is pretty wild. And he is the first guy to get his own rated R movie on Disney+. Plus. I don't know if you guys can guess it, but Deadpool oh, 1 easily, and Deadpool easily. 2. That happened know. this week. But hey, we got another multiple choice question coming Even I towards knew that Henry. one. I knew. <laughs> coming <laughs> that towards one I knew. The right. Hey, you know, he got the first part right, the second half wrong. But let's go on <laughs> to the third question. What is the strongest block you can find in Minecraft? A, obsidian. Oh. B, hmm. diamond. C, ender chest. Or D, ancient debris. I believe it's obsidian, unless I Ooh, am wrong right. at this point. You know, no, okay. right. With, with cool, confidence, cool. Henrik, you need you know, to embrace right. your confidence, I mean, homie. It's okay? been a moment since I played <laughs> Minecraft, so I didn't know if there was an update. Well, I guess the good thing, CCS family, is he is the video game guru after all. And he did get a video game movie question wrong. So far, he's got every gaming question <laughs> correct. So let's give him that fair shot. But number four, which console can you play Crash Bandicoot on? Oh, the PlayStation. Yes, sir. That's correct. That's correct. See, we're just getting you warmed up. But number five, <laughs> this is a tricky one, okay? We're going to get it going. Which video game had the biggest cash prize pool for an eSports tournament? A, League of Legends. B, StarCraft II. C, Dota 2. Or D, FIFA 21. I'm going to have to go with League of Legends on this one. You were so close, my friend, but that is the uh, wrong answer. Dota 2, believe it or not, they host a, an esports tournament called the International 10, and the cash mm -hmm. prize pool is $40 million. That's pretty insane. League of Legends is up there for the highest viewership, 
not necessarily the highest cash prize pool, but that's a great answer, my friend. I would have literally said the same thing. But I think you might know this one. Number six, in Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2, what level must you reach to achieve prestige for your online character? Oh, man, this is, uh, is it 100? Try again. What you got? 50. There is no try uh, again. We only got 20, we only got 30 minutes with them. This is right or wrong. I know we gotta get it going. Well, <laughs> it was level Chris. 70, level 70. <laughs> okay, but let's go yeah. ahead. I got two more questions, and Marissa is right. But for the best selling <laughs> video game franchise without a main character, which one has sold the most? The Sims, Minecraft, Tetris, or Need for Speed? Minecraft. Oh, you're so uh, close, my friend. It's wait, right really? there. They're not there just yet. Tetris is the number one. They sold 500 million physical and digital copies sold just because it's got uh, a longer history in the making. But let's do our very last one because this is kind of a wild question. I don't expect you to get it. But if you do, you are the video game guru. And that is what country tried to put a ban on midnight gaming? Oh, that was uh, China. I believe close, not uh, necessarily. There's another one that just retracted it recently. Really, really. It's a little island. New Zealand? No, yeah, that's incorrect. Uh, it was South Korea once passed a law oh. that prohibited minors under 16 from gaming during the late hours of the night. But you guys heard it first. That is our gaming show with Henrik the Wreck. Not too shabby. Not all of them were easy. But let's get right on into it because Henrik, the first few months of a new year are always lousy with new video games. And what do you recommend as the best video game of 2022 so far? Well, it'd be uh, remiss of me to not mention Elden Ring. Uh, that game, yeah. even now, you know, came out in February and even now people are still talking about it. So I think if you were to really pinpoint a game that stands out, it's definitely going to be that. Uh, I mean, there's there's a good amount of games that did come out this year so far, but pretty much at the end of the day, Elden Ring is the one that kind of stands above all the other ones. But you know what's kind of wild, too? Because I know that there's, there's a little early award shows before the Game Awards, and one of those video games that actually kind of shocked the gaming world was Horizon Forbidden West uh, outbeating Elden Ring. Uh, do you see that being a, a continued hype going into the winter time? It's definitely possible. I think that uh, really what kind of has always been an issue with that franchise is that they release a game at the wrong time. Like mm. Forbidden West came out at the same time as Elden Ring and Elden Ring just completely overshadowed it. So, I mean, I I think that they're great games and I I would love to see them get more attention, you know, but so I, I would love if there's more hype, but I think that as like a consensus on the internet, you can see that people more so lean towards the Elden Ring hype than they that's do. That's funny that you Horizon. actually say that because I, that's probably one of the main reasons why the cat game Stray is getting so much hype this summer because there's literally nothing to compete with it. <laughs> True. Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's, it's like I, a, are you it's, kind it's of a hater of the like, stray game? <laughs> it, it is completely a like just fun experience. It seems I haven't so played Describe yet. the stray game to me because I've never heard of the stray game. Describe it just <laughs> yeah, briefly. So, Don't spend a lot of time. So, just describe briefly. Yeah, I'll, I'll make it quick. I'll make it quick. So basically, you're just playing as a cat. Simple as that. <laughs> That's it. It's not like Goat Simulator, but you're playing as a cat. So like. Yeah. What you're like an alley cat? Are you a you're house literally cat? like Are an alley like... cat? Okay. And the world's dead, and there's a bunch of robots, and that's all we really know. Unless you've actually played the did game. Did they do the stray cat strut? <laughs> Sorry, but oh, of well, I guess of so. Course. But hey, let's uh, let's I move mean... this conversation because you know what, Mercy's getting us way off topic. But it sounds like Elden Ring and Horizon Forbidden West are those games, and then up for parlay is probably stray but let's get on into it because henrik as video games get more expensive to make a growing pillar of the gaming industry runs on nostalgia and your content online has gone viral for addressing this issue what's going on well so basically uh 
they rockstar they made a uh remaster of the original uh gta trilogy uh, a little earlier um or sorry later last year and um i think that a lot of people felt it was a little bit half baked when it came out it probably made them profits i wouldn't wouldn't doubt that you know because people love those games but i want to say that at least my theory is that Rockstar saw the uh, negative press that they got and were like, you know, we can't have this for uh, a franchise such as GTA that is so beloved by the fans. So let's go back to the drawing board. Let's let's uh, put aside the remasters that we're working on right now and we'll come back to them later. And right now we'll we'll work on GTA six because that's what a lot of people want it's been yeah i mean if you're living 15 years the last right? one yeah it's like yeah, 15 it's been, years it's right crazy long no i think it's kind of wild long. and you know we were uh digging into some of your uh your viral content and we got a lot of great fan responses from you henrik and uh benny 19 responded to your video saying i think they've done way too much for gta online i also want a manhunt three and a bully two game on the way as well he's talking about doing sequels now is that really where you see a lot of the momentum for gaming studio companies to push forward i mean there is a bit of a uh, push for nostalgia uh right now in all forms of entertainment you, know, you can see it even in, in movies and television uh so i wouldn't be surprised if there is a bit of a push towards sequels to kind of uh, capitalize on the nostalgia factor of things but uh i i don't know if a sequel is really necessarily needed for every franchise uh there's some that definitely could do with a sequel uh yeah manhunt and bully haven't had anything for a long time so I'm that's sure true that too it's good, not but... like it's a five or six year gap that's more like a 15 20 year gap that's definitely <laughs> exactly. for sure and i know uh cyber culture they wrote i only want uh rdr remaster so i could replay rdr2 then get into rdr immediately after and i guess i was kind of wondering is do they mean red dead redemption or red dead revolver and do we really want to play revolver again i mean that was kind of a shitty game even back on the playstation i don't know how much more you can really uh ramp up with those kind of games so with that being said why do you think rockstar games is pausing their plans to develop you know grand theft auto 4 and red dead Re remasters i mean dana Weigand uh, also responded to your comment or your video and said, no, GTA 6 is not going to hit hard. We expect too much. Do you view it that way? Well, I mean, it's definitely a thing that does happen. You know, games get hyped up so much and then all of a sudden the game comes out and it doesn't meet the hype. We've seen that so many times now. But at the same time, I will say we have seen games that have been super hyped up and came out and pretty much met the expectations and not not to bring up Elden Ring again but that is basically <laughs> a game that did actually meet the hype uh I would well say. I mean shoot if you can get Elon Musk like tweeting about his Elden Ring character I feel like that's like the best kind of advertising that money doesn't have to be involved with but I also want to talk about this hype train that's been happening with a lot of celebrities and but more in part with sports athletes, because you reported on this matter, and a lot of sports athletes are investing in esports or simply acknowledging it, its existence every day. And what have you learned about sport, sports athletes involved in esports? So I've seen that a lot of the uh, athletes that are getting involved, either they're usually like a co owner or an ambassador or just simply an investor they don't necessarily have so to be so they're making money from it it's exactly what i said <laughs> exactly yeah so, so they're, they they're making not money they don't care <laughs> they're, they're not but why do you think people, sports you know, athletes want to get games. but why do you think they want to get involved so badly have you yeah. ever put a thought about it well, well i mean it, it it's a it's a booming uh part of the industry it does make money you know so that is definitely a a, a part of it i would say um but I think that when you when you go look at the difference between you know esports gamers and and physical sport athletes, they're very similar actually. So it's kind of like a, a little bit of a pipeline, I'd say. But don't you think it's kind of fascinating that how they get talking figures like Austin Eckler, he's the Chargers uh, running back, who is the ambassador for Steel City, or let's say Sergio Aguero, he's one of the biggest international stalker stars who owns his own esports league called or team, excuse me, called Crew along with David Beckham doing these kind of things. And I guess my point is because you had a great video that said Shaquille O'Neal came out and said that esports 
players are athletes, which really created a controversy. But then again, if we're seeing all these sports athletes invest in esports, doesn't he have a point? Because I know Tom Abbott 2000 begged the question under your video, is chess a sport? <laughs> does he have a point? <laughs> he does have a point because, you know, it's by definition, uh, sports have to be physical, at least as what's written in the dictionary. But I want to say that, you know, definitions change all the time. And uh, actually, the United States Citizen and Immigration Services, they actually legally do view esports gamers as athletes because they're offering P1 visas to these uh, gamers who are coming into the States to compete. Wow. So, I mean, legally, apparently it is actually a sport. I guess it all makes sense. I mean, especially when you see uh, campuses in Southern California, like, let's say, for example, UC Irvine, who literally have their own college esports teams. I just think that's so fascinating on a level. And do you really feel like athletes have to get involved with the whole esports? Don't you feel like having a fan base of cult of personalities such as like anime fans could really drive this to the next level? Do you really think like sports athletes or let's say even people like Dana White, for example, who's getting involved with esports, but not in the normal video game esports that you might be thinking CCS family, he's getting involved in mobile esports tournaments, which basically in the short form look like the kind of games you might catch a virus on your phone so <laughs> why would he want to get involved <laughs> uh well you know as marissa pointed out uh money 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 talks. thank you money 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 100 percent talks but do you and think that so, we're yeah I, I don't mean to cut you off henrik but do you oh, feel good. like uh we're abusing the term of esports because even in dana white's case they're making it sound like not all of it is cash prize money they go millions being distributed and uh and prize money so are we getting a little carried away with the whole idea of a care package <laughs> yeah i mean if you can uh twist the definition of esports uh to boost your numbers to make yourself look good of course you're gonna do that yeah there's a there's a lot of uh different avenues that people are trying to go through right now to this day to try to find that mucho dinero within the video game industry i think you're right and spot on about it all three of us actually because you know we all have to recognize the gaming industry dominates the entertainment aspect when it comes to television movies and theater and music combined i mean it's totally insane and let's switch it up to some industry talk because currently one of the most successful video games and virtual world in history is completely rejecting nfts and is going as far as saying that it has no place in its future and why is this a big deal for minecraft to cancel nfts well uh minecraft is a huge game the game came out in 2011 and it's still relevant which is crazy yeah, uh, and also it is literally the best-selling video game at two hundred thirty-eight million sales. So like that game has influence, and if they're saying, "Hey, we don't want to be associated with NFTs," that's a big move for the industry. Yeah, because I know a lot of NFTs tend to be only geared towards character cosmetic skins, but a lot of the argument has been uh kind of punching hard towards Minecraft, which is owned by Microsoft, because really the whole uh, I, I feel like the flavor of love that minecraft has is is being able to build your virtual world from scratch almost like as if you're building lego blocks to build these really cool virtual worlds and mind uh, my uh, minecraft for example i keep i want to say like microcraft <laughs> <laughs> but Minecraft had a controversial moment a month ago when they added new moderation system that allowed Microsoft to ban people in private servers, which to me, I think is kind of insane, Hendrik, because private servers are maintained and paid by individuals in which players thought they actually own these virtual worlds. And does this mean we don't really own what we thought we owned? Yeah, I mean... I think that the fear there by the community is more so, you know, systems like that that are a little automated are not always uh, the sort of system that works as intended. You know, YouTube deals with it all the time. You always hear about some copyright issue for a creator and then they have to go through an appeal process. And that's just a, a, a real pain, you know, and I feel like a lot of these communities, especially in Minecraft, they're already moderating themselves. They don't necessarily need uh, uh, automated system to do it for them because they're pretty much handling it themselves there's 
it's just kind of like an overreach, you know, kind of feels like. So these these communities, FFI, they've given a lot of uh, feedback and uh, uh, pushback against this because they feel it's unnecessary. Yeah, so you feel like NFT has no place in the gaming industry, correct? I feel like it's one of those things that's probably going to be around for a little bit longer because people really, really want it to be a thing. But I don't think that it's going to last, honestly. See, that that was the question that I was going to get at, because it feels like if NFTs don't have the backing of the gaming industry, do you see the potential downfall of NFTs? Oh, 100 percent, because, you know, there's so many uh, companies that have already said we're not going to do it. And some companies have said we're going to do it. And then later on, say, OK, never mind. We're not doing this. Uh, and then, you know, gamers themselves, a lot of them uh, do support it. But then there's also a lot of people who are against having NFTs in games. Sounds and, like the last so, yeah. pariah is going to be the meta CEO, Mark Zuckerberg. <laughs> let's see if he figures out a place for NFTs. But let's talk about this last item of business because, man, we've had a lot of uh, great responses under your micro content when you address this issue. And Unity CEO recently apologized for calling video game developers who don't consider monetization early in the process of making games as effing idiots. And the statement got so much flack online that the Unity CEO later apologized. And what a sissy. I mean, doesn't he have a point? I mean, why would you have to apologize just because he said a cuss word? I mean, isn't everybody a grown-ass adult? I mean, don't we all understand the point that a lot of more free-to-play games are coming into the works? Yeah, I mean... Like I said in that uh, micro content, you know, it's free to play, but at what cost? You know, like your your at price of admission is free, but if you want any of the cosmetics in the game, you're gonna be paying money most of the time. Oh uh, yeah. So is it really free? <laughs> No, nothing's free. And I think uh, you had a great uh, fan response under your video, Henrik, and it was from the Happy Tao. And he wrote, wait, the Unity CEO did what? Jesus. But in terms of monetization, I feel like it's tricky. Smaller developers could use it to help fund further progress on the game. And that's exactly what's happening. Uh, we're seeing it with the My Beloved Fall Guys game, for example. It was free to play. It was the most downloaded PS Plus game of all times. And then once Epic Games bought them, which is owned by disney and fortnite then they completely ruined the game turned all your crowns into purple coins which basically mean nothing and now you got virtual bucks that now serve to only be able to buy all the cool cosmetics but i swear do you feel like with these kind of moves for free to play and now doing virtual coins that they're kind of gearing the youth for crypto <laughs> Yeah, a little bit, but I'd say probably more so like the the gambling aspect, which, you know, there's a bit of gambling aspects in yeah. cryptocurrency as it is. Uh, but really, like, if you look at a lot of the countries that have been trying to ban loot boxes, they've been trying to do that because they are trying to fight gambling uh, addictions to, to that are growing from kids that are playing these games. That's you know, true. And we did get an update. We did get an update in Europe, right, where, you know, Germany mm -hmm. did put their foot down. But the whole, you know, Europe as a whole, they said that they want the video game community to figure it out on their own. That's why I kind of giggle about all that. I feel like maybe crypto, maybe this whole gambling aspect is going to be a little bit more inspired with the youth. But the only reason why I mentioned crypto, and I don't know about you, Marissa, does, does your daughter ever say crypto? Never. I mean, because no. I always know the young kids are always trying to justify what, how much a V-Buck actually means. And they're like, no, my, mom, a hundred V-Bucks means four. that's equals to $1. And <laughs> I feel like- four, so we haven't hey, quite but gotten you never there know. yet. <laughs> There's young kids that are on Fall Guys and, you know, in Fortnite to this day. Like, okay, let's say oh, I don't, the seven, I don't let her. I don't let her go bracket. on video games. I don't let her go on video games. Oh, okay, well, you're one. You're one. Well, I don't do. I don't know any of that stuff. That I'm sounds actually, like a like, sin. I don't like uh, that. I'm actually she pretty, I'm pretty intense. No, I'm actually pretty intense. She is, she is missing out on Mario Party. Yeah, you know you're what? Not she educated. can go play Make Believe. It's oh, free. okay, fine, Marissa. Make Believe's free. <laughs> <laughs> Make Believe's free. That's, that's true. <laughs> but Henrik, but we always have a great time with you joining us on the Chris yes. Collins Show, Millennial Talk Show. And let the Love CCS it. family know what's good by letting them know how we can follow you on social media so we can get those gaming memes, industry talk, and so much more. Yeah, so I'm on uh, several different social media platforms. If you go to bio.link slash offhand plays, you'll find links to all of them. You know, Instagram, Twitter, TikTok as well. Um, and then I also uh, post Let's Plays on YouTube three times a week and uh, 
stream on Twitch. So come on by and say hi. I'd love to see you. Hey, there. that's what's good. And you can also find yeah. him on the Chris Collins Show's um, socials also. Yeah, that's mm-hmm. right. Be aware. Yep. Weekly, every Tuesday, find those updates from Henrik the Rec so you don't miss out on the latest gaming news. And Henrik the Rec, thank you again for joining the Chris Collins Show Millennial Talk Show.